Hello students, I am still Mr. Samuel Oj, your civic education teacher. I hope you had a splendid night rest. Today we are going to look at the topic self-employment. Self-employment. The objectives or what we intend to learn after this topic are as follows. Number one, after going through this topic, we are going to be able to define self-employment. We are going to be able to define self-employment. The second objective is that we are going to be able to mention different areas that one can be self-employed, different areas where one can be self-employed. That's our second objective. Our third objective is that we are going to be able to say the need or the importance, the need or importance of self-employment. And lastly, after going through this topic, self-employment, we are going to be able to know the sources of our funding or sources of funding of self-employment. Sources of self-employment funding. Thank you very much. Now, what is self-employment? What is self-employment? Who can try? Okay, John. That's good. Who again can try? Okay, Joy. Okay, you two did well. Thank you very much. Now listen, in addition to what they have said in relation to self-employment, we define self-employment to be the art of doing a legal business. The art of doing a legal business or working for a living without labor under anybody. Let me repeat. I said the art of doing a legal business or working for a living without labor under or laboring under anybody. That labor under anybody. That is what self-employment is all about. Having said that, let us look at self-employment projects. Self-employment projects. By self-employment projects, we simply mean the areas of endeavor that one can engage in for a living. The areas of endeavor that one can engage in for a living. I hope you've gotten that. Now let us look at those areas, those um, self-employment opportunities that one can queue into to make a living for himself, his family, and for society. Number one, farming. Farming. Farming is divided into two. We have two types of farming. We have crop farming and we also have poultry or animal horse boundary. Farming. I said that farming is divided into two. We have crop farming and we have poultry or animal horse boundary. And I equally want to add that farming can be done in large scale can be done in large, large scale, that is with, um, which is e equally known as mechanized agriculture 
or it can be done subsistently. Subsistently, that means in low scale, just to feed one's family. When farming is done in large scale, it is known as mechanized or large scale farming. Then when farming is done just to feed one's family, it is known as subsistence farming or agriculture. Thank you. Having known that, we want to look at the trading or business. Trading or business. Trading or buying and selling. Trading or buying and selling as another form of self-employment. Trading or buying and selling as another form of self-employment. Trading, another, the second type of self-employment I want us to look at today is trading or buying and selling. Trading or buying and selling. By trading or buying and selling, example of such things that fall under trading or buying and selling are book selling, book selling. We have, by book selling, we can see it from the angle of people selling books in bookshops. Bookshops, where we go to buy our um, book materials. Then another type of trading or buying and selling is vending, vending. When we talk of vending, we are simply referring to those who sell newspapers and, and magazines. Newspapers and magazines. Apart from this, we have supermarket sellers. We have supermarket sellers. You already know what a supermarket is. Then we equally have another type of um, buying and selling or trading that fall under this category as petit traders. Petit traders are people who sell little, little things, mostly perishables or things that we use in our home, maybe for our um, kitchen upkeep. Those people are known as petit traders. Those that sell things like vegetable, pepper, onion, and so on and so forth. Another type of self-employment I want us to look at is artisans. Artisans. What is or who is an artisan? We said that these are self-employed middle class people. These are self-employed middle-class people who are independently working for a living in different areas of life or sectors. These are self-employed middle-class people who are independently working for a living in different areas of life or sectors. So we can say that artisans are people who are self-employed, who work independently for a living in different areas of life or sectors. Examples of artisans include mechanics, mechanics, you know them, those that repair our vehicles or our automobile, those things that include KK, um, which is otherwise known as tricycle, different types of um, machines and vehicles. Then we have carpenters, we have electricians, we have masons, people who deal with cement work or who do cement work. And we have block molders. All these categories of people fall under artisans. 
And that is another type of self-employment that one can engage him or herself into. The next type of self-employment I want us to look at is fashion designers. Fashion designers. Who is a fashion designer? Or who are fashion? They sew and design clothes and wear for commercial and wears for commercial purposes. These are people that sew and design clothes and wears for commercial purposes. That is that to in uh, that is to simply say that that is to simply say that they produce our garments, the clothes we wear, they produce it for us to be able to, you know, put on. So this is another area that one can, you know, cue into as somebody who wants to be self-employed. Let me still remind us that this lesson we help us to know areas that we are going to go into, things that we can learn to help ourselves, our family, and our society. And equally, as we are helping ourselves, family, and society, we are equally helping government. Because from all these areas, we can pay tax, which helps government to, you know, improve our society. Now, the next area that one can venture into as a self-employed person is crafts and arts. Crafts and arts. Now, it's cra now, craft and arts involve or involves acquisition of special skills, acquisition of special skills from an expert through apprenticeship over a period of time. Acquisition of special skills from an expert through apprenticeship over a period of time. That means that somebody who wants to engage in this art and craft must submit himself for training, which is known as apprenticeship, to somebody who is already doing that, as, who is already involved in art and craft for over a period of time. That is what we are saying. Arts and crafts are areas that one can submit himself for apprenticeship or learning over a period of time in the hands of somebody who is already doing that work. And such arts and crafts include artwork. We already have art studio in our school. So you, if I mention artwork, you should be able to know what we do there. So people do it for a living. So we, arts and craft include Artwork, weaving, artwork, weaving, carving, and painting. There are other areas that one can equally group under this category. Having said that, let us look at small scale industries. Small scale industries are equally self employed industries where one can venture into and make a living for himself his family, and the society. Mind you, somebody who is self-employed can equally employ other people and pay them so that they can equally take care of their families. So, small-scale industry, industries include food and drink processing industries, food and beverage processing, food and drink processing industries, Food and beverage processing, dyeing and textile. Let me repeat. I said small scale industries include food and drink processing, food and beverage pro processing, dyeing and textiles, food and drink processing, food and beverage processing. Dying and textiles. These are some of the areas that fall under small scale industries. So let, let us look at services. 
this is another area of self-employment avenue, another avenue that can help to employ people, to make them to be independent or to be self-employed. Hmm. No, we call these services or service. An example of services include veterinary services. These are people who take care of our animals. Call them veterinar veterinarians. And the area that the, this science of doing it is known as veterinary sciences. So this is another area that somebody can venture into as a self-employed person. We have transport services. We have transport services. We have laundry services. So, by transport services, we know that somebody can buy a car, give it out to the transport company to take care of him and give him returns at the end of the month. Or that person can use his hand to ride his vehicle to make a living through being, by being a taxi driver. So we have laundry services. They take care of our wares, making sure that they wash them, iron them, and package them well for us to collect and wear. So these are some of the areas that fall under services. Now, having said that, let us move, move on and look at the need for self-employment or the importance of self-employment. Why is it important to be self-employed? Why do we need to be self-employed? What do we need to benefit and gain as self-employed people? This is the area I want us to look at now. So one of the importance, one of the benefits or gain we stand to gain from self-employment is that it creates job or makes up to be self-reliant. It creates job or makes us to be self-reliant. That simply means that it gives us opportunity to be people who are earning um, money from our jobs or from our work. So it makes us to be job, um, to be under a paid job or things that people can come around and collect and pay us. The second need for self-employment is that it leads to redu reduction in crime or in the crime rates. Reduction in crime rates. By this, we mean that it is said that an idle man is the devil's workshop. So somebody who is um, readily employed doesn't have time to think negatively or engage in crime. So by being a self-employed somebody, it leads to reduction in crime. Because people who would have been busy roaming the streets, looking for things to crime to commit, are now busy doing one work or the other. As a result of self-employment, that is the second gain or benefit of self-employment. The third benefit is that it serves as a source of revenue for our government. It serves as a source of revenue for our government. You know that governments generate tasks from people who do work in our society. And from this money that government generates, they can provide essential social services for us. For instance, they can build hospitals, they can build roads, they can build schools with all this money that they generate from people who are self-employed as a form of tax. Another one importance of self-employment is that it helps in our national development. It helps in national development, which means that it helps in all-round development of a country to make a country better than before. And that is where the national development comes in. So, self-employment helps in national development of a country. Lastly, self-employment leads to self-development and enhancement. It enables people who are self-employed to enhance, be enhanced in their physical and other skills. It helps them to be enhanced, to enhance their skills 
to learn more about what they are doing and to do it in a more better way and to teach others too. So having said that, these are some of the benefits of self-employment. Now let us quickly go to another subject and we say sources of funding or self-employment. Sources of funding or self-employment. By sources of funding of self-employment, we are looking at areas or avenues that one can go to to get money to, you know, finance himself to start up something to be self-employed. One of those avenues or sources of self-employment include personal savings. Personal savings. That means that we ought to learn the skill of saving little by little for our future. By so doing, when we save little by little, we can come up with a huge sum of money which we can use to open up one business or the other to enable us to become self-employed. Another avenue of raising money for self-employment is to our family or our friends. To our family or our friends. We can go about asking our family members or friends or relatives who have money to help us start a business. We can go about asking our family members, our friends or relatives to help us generate money with which we can start up a business to be self-employed. Another avenue or source of um, money for funding our self-employment projects is thrift and loans. Thrift and loans. By thrift and loans, thrift simply means the art of using money judiciously or wisely so as to so as not to waste it. Thrift simply means the art of using money wisely in order not to waste such money. So when we go about loaning money, getting loan from either the bank or from some cooperative societies, we can generate money with which we can use and start up our business and apply wisdom to that money by not wasting it, by making sure that we you know, live up to expectation by doing what we are supposed to do with that money, most investing it wisely into our self-employed businesses so as to generate more money and pay back our money, our loan or money gotten from people. So another avenue of generating money for our self-employed um, ventures includes government grants. Government grants. By grants, we mean that Government can give out money to people to enable them to start up small-scale businesses or businesses without paying back. So any money that is a grant is not meant to pay back. And such avenues that government uses to, you know, give money to people to enable them to start up their self-employment projects include NAPEP, NDE, SDE. NAPEP, NDE, SDE. So these are avenues that government can use to give money to us to help us start up our own business. So let me explain two of these acronyms. NDE simply means National Directorate of Employment. National Directorate of Employment. SDE simply means State Directorate of Employment. You know that government provide these avenues. Now I'm giving you an, assi an assignment. Look up in our next lesson, before our next lesson. Tell me the meaning of NAPEP. NAPEP. Now, having said that, let us look at the last source of funding for self-employment as we listed them out. That is sale of property. Sale of property. By sale of property means our selling what we already own. Selling what is vital to us, what we already have. We can sell off our old cars, can sell off our keke, we can sell off uh, an 
on built lands to enable us generate money to start up a business. So this is another source of income for us to start up a self-employed business or project. In our next lesson, we are going to look at skill acquisition stroke training centers. Skill acquisition stroke training centers. Having said that, we've come to the end of today's lesson. I hope you enjoyed the lesson. God bless you and thank you. But before I call it a day, because I call it a wrap, I want us to look at these assignments. One, I want you to define self-employment. Self-employment. Secondly, list three avenues or three areas that one can be self-employed. I don't want you to go about listing the ones I taught you. List other areas that one can venture into as a self-employed person. Another one, tell us three importance of self-employment. I don't mean you should go about mentioning the ones we mentioned. Just think out three um, importance or need of self-employment. God bless you as you do this assignment. God bless you.